Hello and welcome to this video today which is about the humble humbucker and we all know it and mostly we all love it but I think we can all be in agreement that the humbucker is very radically different from single cars. Now the humbucker was made in 1955 by Seth Lover working for Gibson and before that guitarists had only known single cars. So the fact that people had only played single cars and then something so radically different comes out Knowing how conservative guitarists are nowadays, it surprises me quite a lot that it ever took off. So nowadays the humbucker is accepted for being so fundamentally different from single coils, but back then it was so radically different it made me think that maybe the humbucker could have had a softer transition, maybe go not so far away from the standard single coil that everyone knew and loved back then. And uh, it was during the making of How a Humbucker Works, uh, rather How a Pickup Works video, that I got thinking that I was explaining that fundamentally the big difference between the humbucker and the single coil, the main difference being the string spacing, or the sensing area, the spacing of that. And uh, it made me think that actually a humbucker's not designed in the aspect of keeping that string spacing window, uh, the sensing window, as small as possible. It's not really designed in, in the best way possible, and it could be improved upon. Uh, or rather changed, uh, not necessarily improved, but to get it slightly closer to that single coil. To demonstrate this point, let's measure exactly what the string sensing spacing is. On a humbucker, it's approximately 35 millimeters, and on a single coil, it's about 15. That alone makes the two pickups very, very different in their tonality. So, how am I going to make a humbucker that sounds so fundamentally different from this? Well, the way in which a standard humbucker works is that the wire is wound directly around the poles here. So that the string sensing spacing is all of this on the two bobbins. So, what we can do, because so much of the string spacing is wasted by the poles being in the middle, what we can do is take two bobbins, these are humbucker bobbins, exactly like these, and if we put them like that, we have exactly the same space to wind on, but then the string sensing spacing will be here to here, instead of that whole length there, so it's significantly less, so that's going to make it a lot clearer, and because it's clearer, hopefully it should be better for stuff that requires heavy gain and lots of distortion and of course for it to be a humbucker we need different polarities of the string being above it and usually that's done with the poles being in the middle here we'll have south here north here or vice versa and then the little bit of string that vibrates above them will be charged like so but there's no reason why we can't have magnets on either side like this, charging. And what this does is, say we've got north here and south here, north is going to charge it into a southern charge, and that will be over this. And then this will charge it the opposite, and this will be over here. We'll have a little bit of a dead zone in the middle, but no more than we'll have a dead zone in the middle of these being opposite here. So hopefully that won't change things all that much, and We'll just shove this all in the cover and um, in order to make it fit, because usually a cover goes from here to here in width, what I'm going to do is I'm going to push it all up against the side of the cover, like so, and then have a little spring on the side that holds it in place against it. And there we have it. Our two magnets on either side, our bobbins, which obviously in the real thing are going to be wound with wire, and then a little spring holding it all in place so nothing falls out. And now the pickup's built in here in the bridge position, and in the neck position I have my configuration neck pickup, which is a Stratocaster single coiled toned humbucker. And uh, just going to give it the first run through and see what the initial thoughts are, and then take it from there. So, starting with clean. And then we 
we can compare that to the neck pickup. immediately we can tell there's a big output difference so the output of this to be a high output pickup it's definitely going to need to increase um, usually this is matched with uh, about 14-15k bridge humbucker which of course that isn't the output but that's a general rule so uh, I want the bridge to, to be around about that sort of output so Output is the first thing that needs to change, but let's play through a little bit more and then get more familiar with the tonality. And neck position again. So it sounds, it sounds quite thin, which, because of the smaller sensing window, it, it should do. And for heavy downtuned stuff, that's probably a really good thing. So the general concept behind it, so far it seems to be executing it quite well. It's just it's going to need quite a lot of tweaking to get it to a, a decent tone. And then let's put it where hopefully this should belong, which is distorted stuff. <laughs> So the output difference isn't so noticeable there, but it seems to be keeping itself pretty clear under pretty high levels of game, and this amp really does have tons and tons of game. Which now is probably a good time to mention I am playing through a Bugera 333 combo, uh, the 212 combo, which uh, is bottled off the PVXXX. Uh, and then let's do some big chord chorusy stuff and see how, how the clarity comes through for that. Starting on the neck, actually, start on the bridge to keep it consistent. first observations of this is that output is far too low and um, also maybe I can show it here if we go clean it's, it's lacking quite a lot of treble by in comparison to the, the neck which should naturally be a whole lot more bassy but getting quite a lot of treble bite on that one but that one really doesn't have too much bite so it's definitely going to have to go for thicker wire to reduce the capacitance in the coil and it's going to it's going to need a higher output and uh, I've realized that in winding it with 45 as opposed to a thicker wire gauge is that when the bobbins are sideways the the wire actually still sits quite far away from the cover because it doesn't fill the whole bobbin to the the side of it so the next prototype, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this completely but wind it with a thicker wire gauge which for 7000 winds I could probably fit 43 on there. So next prototype is going to be exactly this, just a different wire. <laughs> 